Hi, let us understand interest liability under MSMAD Act. As per section 16, interest is payable for the delayed payments to micro and small enterprises. Now, section 16 also says what is the at what rate the interest has to be paid and the interest rate is three times the bank rate as notified by Reserve Bank of India. Presently, the notified rate is 6.5. So, if you say three times, then it is 19.5% per annum. Now, section 15 says that the maximum due date cannot exceed more than 45 days. So, you may question me, suppose if there is an agreement between the buyer and seller and the due date is exceeding more than 45 days. In such case, then you have to restrict the due date up to 45 days only as per this act. Of course, contractually buyer can pay after the after the 45th day but he has to pay interest under this act suppose if the due date as per the agreement is less than 45 days then the due date as mentioned in the agreement should be the final due date and any payment made after the due date as mentioned in the agreement should consider for delay days and interest has to be paid suppose if there is no agreement between the buyer and seller in such case, then we have to consider 15 days from the day of acceptance or deemed day of acceptance of goods or services as due date and on the expiry of 15th day, if the payment is made, then the delay days has to be counted and interest has to be paid. Okay. Now, for better understanding, we will take one example and see. As I explained in the previous uh, slide, let us understand how the interest calculation will be done for various uh, scenarios. I have considered here three scenarios. One is where there is no agreement with the buyer and where the due date as per agreement is 30 days and where the due date as per agreement is 60 days. If you see, the Invoice date in all the three scenarios is retained as 2nd June 2023 and entry in your books it is considered as 2nd August 2023. Now if there is any TDS, TDS will be deducted and net amount only we will calculate the interest. Of course if TDS is paid to the exchequer then it has come to the credit of the vendor. So balance amount is only net amount. Now if you see in scenario 1. The due date is considered as 17th May 2023. Why? There is no agreement here. If there is no agreement, then as per definition of appointed day, it is 15 days from the day of acceptance or deemed day of acceptance to be considered as the due date. So 2nd May 2023 was the day of delivery of goods. Okay. Now 15 days if you take due date has become 17th May 2023. If you see in second scenario, there is an agreement between the buyer and seller and the due date is 30 days from the day of acceptance or deemed day of acceptance of goods or services. Here invoice date is 2nd June that means it is presumed that the goods or services are delivered as on the day of 2nd June. So we are taking 2nd June as the basis for reckoning 30 days. So 2nd June 30 days then it is becoming due date as 2nd July due date as per the agreement which is less than 45 days. So, we have to consider due date as per agreement and coming to scenario 3, it is 60 days from the day of acceptance or deem day of acceptance as per the agreement, okay, 60 days as per the agreement. But as per section 16 of the act, the due date cannot exceed more than 45 days. So, this 45 days also has to be taken from the day of acceptance or deem day of acceptance of goods or services. So, in our example, the day of acceptance of goods is 2nd June and hence 45 days from 2nd June will be the due date will be 17th July 2023. In all the three cases, the date of payment is 2nd August. See, I purposely retained this invoice date, voucher date, same and date of payment is also same because then only we will able to understand the delay days under various scenarios. In the first scenario where there is no agreement, the delay days between date of payment and due date is 17th May 2023, 78 days. In second scenario, it is 32 days and it is 17 days in the case of third scenario. Okay. As per 
section 16 the rate notified by RBI has to be considered three times of the rate notified by RBI to be considered so the monthly rate notified is 0.54 percent which is 1.63 percent per month to be taken as interest for delayed payment rate of interest for delayed payment okay so for in all the three cases 1.63 percent and the interest is being calculated using the formula future value so this future value formula i have checked below okay in the first scenario 1 lakh is the outstanding amount net amount total delay days is 78 days and first 30 days i have taken interest calculation and i have arrived at the outstanding amount including interest because why this is because it is compounded on monthly basis that is the reason so first month outstanding amount is 1 lakh 1000 which is taken forward as opening balance and interest is calculated on cumulative amount outstanding including interest at the beginning of the month and then calculated interest for the subsequent month and again it is taken as total outstanding including two months interest and finally opening balance has been taken and it is totally 78 days so balanced 18 days interest has been calculated on proportionate basis and the total interest what is coming here is 4283 and what is coming by using future value formula in excel is 4280 it is because here the decimal is taken till the end okay but here i have taken only three decimal that is the reason it is the difference otherwise there is no much difference it is 4283 and here it is 4280 coming same same way i have checked with the second situation also it is 1561 here and here it is 1560 okay and third scenario also so it is matching so you can use future value for compounding interest calculation and calculate the interest and take provision in the books or make payment to the vendor as as per your company norms okay